Nine, CBSE Board, Poem, Lord Ullen's Daughter, by Thomas Campbell. A chieftain to the highlands bound, cries, Boatman, do not tarry, and I'll give you thee a silver pound to row us over the ferry. Now who be ye would cross Lodge Gale, this dark and stormy weather? Oh, I'm the chief of Ulva's Isle, and this Lord Ullen's daughter. And fast before her father's men, three days we have fled together. For should he find us in the glen, my blood would stain the heather. His horsemen hard behind us ride. Should they our steps discover, should they our steps discover, then who will cheer my bonny ride? Then who will cheer my bonny bride? When they have slain her lover, outspoke the hardy Highland wit. I'll go, my chief, I'm ready. It's not for your silver bride, but for your winsome lady. And by my word, the bonny bird, in danger shall not tarry. So though the ways are raging wide, I'll row you over the ferry. By this storm, breathe loud apace. The watcher wraith was shrieking and the scowl of heaven each face grew dark as they were speaking but still as wilder grew the wind and as the night grew dearer and as the night grew drearer adown the glen rode armed men their trampling sounded nearer oh haste thee haste the lady cries though tempests round us gather i'll meet the raging of the skies but not an angry father the boat has left a stormy land a stormy sea before her, when, oh, too strong for the human hand, the tempest gathered o'er her. And still they rode amidst, amidst the roar of waters fast prevailing. Lord Ullen reached that fatal shore. His wrath was changed to wailing. For sore dismayed through storm and shade, his child he, dis- he did discover. One lovely hand she stretched for aid, and one was round her lover. Come back, come back, he cried in grief, across this stormy weather, and I'll forgive your highland chief, my daughter, oh my daughter. It was vain, the loud waves lashed the shore, return or aid preventing. The water wild went over his child, and he was left lamenting. So the summary continues, their boat left the dash, their boat left the shore and as it got caught in the stormy sea, Lord Erlen reached the deadly shore. His anger changed to wailing when he saw his daughter dead. He asked her to return to the shore but it was too late, she had already died. As the stormy sea claimed his daughter and her lover. They have not spoken about the chieftain but we are assuming that he also must have died. Now the next question is why does Lord Erlin's daughter defy her father and elope with her lover? Why does Lord Erlin's daughter do this? In answer to this it is our own speculation because the poem does not talk about it but it is quite understood that she loved him He was willing to marry her, but the father did not approve of the chieftain, so she decided to defy her father and elope away with her lover. The next question is, give two characteristics of the boatman who ferries the couple across the sea. They are asking us about his character, the kind of person that he is. Whenever a question like this is asked, you cannot simply state that this is the character of this person. You have to supplement it with what was said in the poem because of which you have come to the conclusion that this is the character of this person. So here we will say that he is brave because although the sea is stormy and his experience has told him very clearly that it is very dangerous to uh, get into the ocean like that, he is still agreeing to take them across. So this shows that he is a very brave person. Also he is not greedy at all. He is taking such risk of his life and he is taking them across. He has offered him money. The chieftain has offered the boatman a silver pound. 
and yet he says, I do not want your silver pound. So this tells us that the boatman is not greedy. He's not a greedy person. He's a very humane person. He's taking pretty, uh, uh, he's taking pity on the bride, and that's why he's ferrying them across. So these are the kind of characteristics you can talk about the boatman. Similar question can be asked about the chieftain, about the lady, and about Lord Earl in itself. So you should be prepared with these all these answers. The next question is imagery refers to something that can be perceived through more than one of the senses. Imagery that is created by the poet. It uses figurative language to help form mental pictures. This poem is such that when you are reading it, a mental picture is painted in front of you, wherein you can see that chieftain and the girl and the boat and the boatman and they are ferrying across the stormy sea and the poet talks about the clouds. So Campbell uses vivid, diverse and powerful imagery to personify the menacing face of nature. The menacing face of nature is because nature is being very cruel to them. So Campbell is portraying that picture very clearly to us in the poem. In question number 9, they are asking us to bring out those lines from the poem which are describing the anger of nature. So they have given us stanza number and we have to present one or two lines from that stanza. First they have said stanza 6. The line that I have picked out from the 6th paragraph is Waves are raging white. The waves are seeming to be in so much anger that they are lashing the shore with so much power that a white froth is created. So they are raging white. They are becoming white with rage. Stanza number 7, one option they have given us, water wrath was shrieking. The water was in so much of anger that it was shrieking, it was screaming. Like someone is angry and they start screaming, just like that the water seemed to be in so much of anger that it is screaming, it is making so much of noise. They have asked us to pick out one more line from the same stanza. The line I have picked out is, each face grew dark. By face, the poet is referring to the clouds in the sky. And he is saying that the clouds which are making the shape as if they are somebody's faces, they are growing dark. They are becoming dark just like when somebody is angry and they become red faced. So they become dark. Just like that, these clouds which seem to be somebody's faces are becoming dark because of anger. Paragraph number 9, the line I have picked out is the raging of the skies. The skies are as if they are in rage, they are in anger. Stanza number 10, stormy sea. The sea is in a storm and what they have given us is stormy land. Stanza number 13, stormy water is the phrase that I have picked out from the 13th paragraph which is showing that nature is in anger. And then stanza number 14, loud waves lash the shore. The waves are so loud, they are making so much of noise, they are lashing the shore. In the 10th question, they are saying read the following lines and answer the questions that follow. A question like that is called an RTC, reference to context, wherein lines from the chapter or the poem are presented in the question paper itself and then a couple of very simple one word, one line answers are asked on those lines. So that is the question over here. The lines that are given are, his horsemen hard behind us ride, should they our steps discover? Then who will cheer my bonnie bride when they have slain her lover? The question they have asked is, who is his in line 1? So his horseman, the his is Lord Erlin. Who does us refer to? His horseman hard behind us ride. The us refers to the chieftain and Lord Erlin's daughter. So very simple questions are asked, the answers are very simple, one word, one line answers. The next question is, explain, cheer my bonnie bride. 
the explanation is that the boatman is being told by the chieftain that Lord Erlin's men are chasing him. And if they discover them, then the men will kill him. They will kill the chieftain. So he says, once I am killed, then who is going to cheer my bonnie bride? Who is going to make my bride, keep my bride happy and safe? She will become very sad if I am killed by her father's men. The third question is, why would the lover be slain? The lover would be slain because Lord Erlin does not approve of him. He is in love with Lord Erlin's daughter. So Lord Erlin has sent horsemen to chase him and kill him. He wants to get him killed so that his daughter should not get married to him. The next question is, the water wrath was shrieking. Is the symbolism in the line a premonition of what happens at the end? Give reason for your answer and the answer is in stanza number 7. The water wrath was shrieking is a symbolism because the poet is trying to tell us that the water was screaming. It was in anger. It was screaming. It was warning the lovers. It is telling the reader that the water is too dangerous. If these two lovers which are blinded, who are blinded in love, if they plan to enter the water in such bad condition, they may not survive the wrath of the water. They will not be able to survive the stormy sea. So there is a build up, there is a symbolism wherein the poet is informing us that what is going to follow is very dangerous. The next question is, the poet, the twelfth question, the poet uses words like a down, road, which contain harsh consonants. Why do you think the poet has done this? The question is that very words with very harsh consonants, words like a down, road, these are very harsh consonants. Consonant is the sound that is produced by the word. The poet has used has opted to use such words. Why has he done this? So the answer to this question is that the poem begins at a very soft note wherein there are these lovers who are trying to elope. But in the end, the poem ends with a note where both the lovers die trying to escape, trying to have a life together. They die over there trying to escape. So. The poet is giving us words with harsh consonants because he is preparing the reader for a climax that is going to be very harsh, that is going to be a, a jolt to the reader. He wants us to be prepared in anticipation that what is going to happen to the lovers. In the next question, they are saying that in stanza 10, the poet says the boat has left a stormy land, a stormy sea before her. So these are the lines they have given us from the poem. The question they are asking is that in both these lines, the word stormy assumes different connotations. Connotations means meanings. It implies different things. What are they? So when the poet is saying stormy land, he is referring to the storm that is created, the dust storm that is created by the horsemen of Lord Erlin who are chasing the lovers. So that is why the land has become stormy because they can even hear the trampling of the horses. The men are so close by. And in the second line when he says a stormy sea before her, the sea is in a complete storm. So she has a dilemma to face wherein either she can face an angry father who is creating a stormy land or she can face an angry sea which is creating a stormy sea. So that is the two different connotations of the word stormy in the two lines. The next question is in both these lines, the next question is the lady faces a dilemma here. What is it? So the dilemma she faces is she is standing here with her lover. 
she is being chased by the horsemen sent by her father since the past 3 days she can either turn around and face her angry father who will definitely not kill her she can still try to convince him she can save her life or she can choose not to face him but hold her lover's hand and step into this stormy ocean which can kill her because the boatman again and again the wind the cloud the ocean everybody again and again is trying to tell her that the weather is too bad she is taking a risk so this is the dilemma that she faces but if she turns around to her father then she has to forgo her lover but if she forgoes her father and she chooses to go with her lover she may have to forgo her own life along with the lover's life so this is the dilemma she faces this is the decision that she has to take the next part of the question is what choice does she finally make the choice that is finally made with her is that she will face the stormy sea but not an angry father she chooses to run away with her lover rather than go back to her father the question number 14 is lord erlin reached the fatal shore just as his daughter left it just as the daughter had left the shore the boat has left lord erlin reaches the shore that is in stanza 11 why is the shore called fatal just as the daughter left the shore the father lord erlin reached the shore and the shore has been called fatal by the poet because the daughter dies at that shore the water the ocean was so stormy that it drowned the boat and the lover and the daughter are killed there they die there that is why that particular shore where these lovers die has been called the fatal shore the next question is why does lord erlin's wrath change into wailing on seeing 